Hi everybody, this is Nathan from Rain Networks again with our next uh, series of Proofpoint Essentials demo videos here. Uh, in our previous uh, videos we covered uh, how to add customers and how to use the navigational breadcrumb system uh, up here in the upper left hand corner of the Proofpoint Essentials portal. We also covered uh, how to change licensing, branding, and some of your domain settings. So in this section here, we're going to talk about how to manage users. This is very crucial because essentially you're getting billed for um, user email addresses. And so we're going to cover a little bit how that breaks down in Proofpoint, but because this affects your billing, it's very crucial that you get your users um, squared away and taken care of correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and drill down into my Chad's Automotive uh, test customer here that I've set up, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on Users and Groups, and you can see right now it's just showing me the one user. So now if we said, well, how how do we get more users into the system? Because if we have, let's say we have five uh, employees at Chad's Automotive, we want to make sure that we're paying for just five licenses that maybe we're, you know, not filtering some erroneous email addresses and thus getting charged for them. So we have a couple different ways of getting users in here. First of all, I could click add user and just add the user manually. This is one way that we can add a user. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a test user here. Test user. Test. Okay. Um, I actually don't have to put in a mobile number here. This is simply uh, for administrative purposes. The role here, which is kind of interesting, is I've got a couple different roles that I can assign to the user. So one is, if I make them an organization admin, I'm giving this person the ability to log in and actually change settings in my account. An end user role is just your standard user role. They can log into the portal, they can change their own personal spam filtering settings and their own personal proof point settings, but they can't make any organizational changes. Um, they can also manage their own quarantine, they can use their own emergency inbox, those kinds of things, but again, no organizational settings. Or a silent user. So a silent user is somebody that we're doing filtering for, but we're kind of admitting that, hey, they'll never log into the portal. They may not even want to log into the portal because it's just another set of uh, credentials they have to manage. So we're just going to make them a silent user, which means we are paying for them and, and we're getting filtering on a subscription basis for them, but they're not going to have a, a login role. I'm going to go ahead and select end user for this one and hit save just as a way to show that that's the first way that we can now add a user account. I can also, as you see here, I can add in a password. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and create a password for this user because I will be logging in as them later. All right, there we go. So now I've got a password uh, for this, this new user. All right, I'm going to go back here to users so I can get back to the main section and show you. So now there you go. I've got two users in my account. Okay, the second and most popular way that uh, users are added into the system is using SMTP Discovery. So here's how SMTP Discovery works. This is a very, very cool feature. As you begin your filtering with Proofpoint, Proofpoint starts to recognize the email addresses that are coming in for inbound email. So if I've got five different users, Proofpoint is seeing, oh, hey, I'm getting user uh, email for Bob and an email for Joe. And oh, so by the way, there must be people at this company called Bob and Joe. And it shows up under SMTP discovery. Now, I don't have anything in here yet. But if I did, it would list the email addresses that it has found that it does not see corresponding Proofpoint accounts for. And it would let me click on those accounts and then convert them into user accounts. So it's kind of its way of saying, hey, this looks like the users that belong for your company. Do you want these to be accounts? And it kind of suggests to create them. So very, very handy feature. And it's probably the most popular way that people build user accounts with Proofpoint is they'll just turn the service on for a week. They'll come back a week later. By that time, the system has discovered all of the general email addresses for the company. And you can quickly create all of those people as either end users or silent users. You can classify them however you want at that point. But SMTP discovery is a, probably the best way, I feel, for uh, making 
uh, making user accounts. The other way that we can add users, aside from putting them in manually here with the add user button or using SMTP discovery, is we can go back to company settings and go to import users. They have a separate tab here. And you can see that we have either the Active Directory option or CSV. So if we want to actually do an Active Directory synchronization, uh, we can put in the information here for uh, Active Directory using LDAP, and it'll go get our user list. Or we can go to CSV, and you can see that we can click on this CSV file format instructions, and we can configure a CSV with this kind of format and put our users in that way. So you've got adding them in manually, you've got SMTP discovery, you've got Active Directory, and you get CSV. Those are the four basic ways um, to get uh, user accounts into your Proofpoint Essential system. You'll see there's also a function for groups in here. So let's say, you know, I had a group like, you know, sales at mycompanyname.com. I can create a group in here and then add people in there. You don't pay for user accounts that are like group or distribution uh, licenses, or sorry, group or distribution type email addresses. You're only paying for individual users who you intend um, to do filtering for. All right, so that kind of covers uh, users and groups. Again, you want to make sure and get this uh, part correct simply because the amount of users that are in here is what you're going to get billed for every month. And if we go back to company settings and then licensing, you can see how many users that you're licensed for and how many active users there are. And they will just automatically make this number larger as your user account grows. Alright, so that's how uh, users works. We'll be back with another video soon.